Hello everyone, I'm Andy Sirwich with Altera Software, and I'm here today with another Altero VM Backup educational video. Now, unlike some of our previous videos that are more feature-centric, this video series really focuses more on situational type of uses for our product. So, what I thought I'd cover today in this video is um, the initial steps you take after purchasing the product and, and getting your license key. You know, this will include things like the actual installation of the product. This will cover things like um, inserting your license key and getting your first backup started. So, uh, so you've, again, you've just purchased the product. What are your initial steps and how do you complete them? So what you want to do is the first thing you'll see on the screen here is you're going to want to go ahead and download the product itself. You can do that by going to altero.com slash vm dash backup slash download dot php. It'll take you to this form. You just fill out the form and you get your, uh, your install file. Now what you do, once you get it to the machine that you're actually going to run the software on, we're going to want to execute that. Now let's talk about system requirements really quick. System requirements are, are really low. Um, I mean, our software can even be installed directly on top of a Hyper-V host if you want to. Um, in the case where you're using VMware in your environment, you're going to have to install our software on uh, another Windows box somewhere in the environment. So keep that in mind. So uh, on this particular example, I'm using a Hyper-V host and it is a Windows core server. So there's no, you know, there's no Windows UI installed. It's just a bare bones Windows server uh, 2016 in core mode. And you'll see here, I've already copied the Altero setup file to this machine. You know, this Altero backup setup build.exe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to execute that just via the command line here, and it will actually launch the installer. Now, if you were running the full GUI of Windows Server or, you know, Windows Client Operating System, because our software can run on a Windows Client Operating System too, Windows 7, 8, or 10. Uh, but if you were running in a, a, a GUI environment, you could just execute the file just like any other setup file. So the wizard is pretty bare bones here. There's not a whole lot to configure in the wizard. I'm going to click next. I'm going to accept the EULA. Uh, now, really the only choice, the only thing that you can really change in the installation of our product here is to actually define where the product is installed. In the vast majority of cases, uh, the default is fine here. So I'm going to go ahead and click next, and I'm going to say install. And there's not a whole lot to... Uh, to our product as far as, as complexity and different things that need to be installed. Uh, the setup file itself is around 300 megabytes in size, so not overly large, and it really doesn't take that long to install. So I'm just gonna copy some new files here. We're gonna make some changes to the Windows firewall configuration, gonna start the services, and pretty soon the backup application is gonna be ready to go, and, uh, and we'll get started here. We've got a couple of different options here. So I can either leave this checkbox enabled to launch the management console locally on this machine. Uh, a lot of times administrators have, you know, either their laptop or like a dedicated management workstation or server that they run all of their management utilities from. You can do this type of remote management type of setup with our product. Uh, we have an additional download out on our website. Uh, it's just the management tools. So you can install the management tools and remotely manage one of our Altero VM backup installations. <clears throat> So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the management console here locally just for simplicity's sake. And in a second here, I'll be prompted to go ahead and log in. So, you know, I mentioned that remote management option. If you were on like a, a, a workstation, a management workstation, you'd select this option, you'd put in your DNS name or your IP address, your credentials, and you'd connect that way. But being as I'm managing the installation that's actually on this machine, I'm going to select the this machine option. I'm going to hit connect. And when you select that, this machine option, it'll actually use the credentials of the logged in user to authenticate to the application. So now I'm logged into the management console. Now there's nothing being backed up yet inside of this, uh, inside of this application. So you're gonna see kind of this quick setup wizard here. We kind of guide you through the first one, two and three steps needed <clears throat> to, uh, to get up and running. Uh, an established installation, you won't see this because after the initial setup, all of these prompts here that you see right now go away. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add the host that needs to be backed up. Now, in my case here, I have a single local host that's a Hyper-V host. It automatically pulled that in for me. You're going to see that very common in very small deployments where you've got maybe one host 
and you're running the backup software directly on it in the case that it's Hyper-V. Um, if you had a standalone VMware host or really any number of VMware hosts, you'd have to come in here, you'd have to say add host and run through this wizard here. Same thing for any other you know, remote um, Hyper-V hosts that are maybe in that same environment, you would have to add them here if you, if you wanted to do that. Now, um, being that I'm running it on the local host, it's already been added. There's nothing really more for me to do here except for manage the license. Now, if, uh, if you've purchased our product, you're going you're to get an email that contains a license key. And what you're going to do is you're going to come in here, you're going to click manage license like I just did, and you're going to say, I already have a license key. And what you'll do is you'll actually cut and paste that license key right into this form. You'll say assign license key, and away you go. You'll be all licensed and ready to go. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna let it run in the 30-day trial mode. Uh, you can see that I've got one virtual machine contained on this host, so not a whole lot going on in this particular host, but it works for our example today. The next thing that I need to do is I need to configure a backup location. So where do I wanna actually store these backups? I can do that from the backup locations view here. And beings, it's the first time that we've done this, it automatically prompts me to add a new backup location. Now, what I did on the machine running the software is I, I created a second drive on it that I'm going to use for backup. So um, as far as our application is concerned, this is a physical drive, so I'm gonna select physical drive, and it's gonna give me the option of choosing which physical drive on this machine I wanna use for backups. Like I said, I've already configured this extra drive here. I'm going to select that, and I'm gonna click finish and it will configure that location as a uh, backup location. And now to assign my virtual machine to that backup location, I simply click and drag the virtual machine over to that location and I hit save changes. And that's all that's needed to assign the virtual machine to that location. Now, whenever a backup is done for that virtual machine, it will be stored in that location. So now the last step to kind of get the initial things out of the way for your deployment is to actually take your first backup. Now, this is a manual backup. Um, really, it's just to get the, the first backup done. Uh, you can set up schedules and retention policies, but we're not going to be covering that in this video. Uh, that will be covered in another video later on. Uh, the first time you're on the application, at some point you might see this prompt if you want to provide us some feedback um, or if you want to provide um, you know, unidentifiable um, diagnostic information, you know, so we get a little bit of telemetry information on how the application's used. You can do that by putting your email address here and, and hitting yes to accept. Otherwise, if you have some security concerns or you just plain don't want to do it, which is fine, you can click no here as well. So the purpose of this demo, I'm going to click no. Now, I'm going to select the one VM that I have in this environment and I'm going to click take backup. And now that backup will be submitted and I can click this pop up here to take myself back to the dashboard and I can see that this backup is in process right down here in the active and upcoming operations section. Now as this backup finishes and uh, subsequent backups finish, some of these charts here, this backup drive status, this deduplication and compression status, this recent operations section here, all that will start to get populated with information as you start doing backups day to day. The other thing that I really wanted to highlight being this is kind of a, uh, a first steps type of video is how easy it is to get support. We've got support baked right into our application. If you come down here to get help in the left hand pane, we've got our email support information, we've got phone support information, and we've got live chat baked right into the application. So if you're a chat type of person, you can click this button or you can click the button up here and you just have to fill out a simple form with email address and name and you'll be connected with one of our support representatives fairly quickly. Now, a couple of other things to point out here. If somebody from support asks you to generate an error report, you can click this button right here to do that. Um, if they need to remote in your machine to assist you with a problem, you click remote support client and it will actually generate an ID that you just provide them that allows them to connect in and help you out. And, um, you know, really, if you want just some general information, we've got links to our knowledge base, our FAQ, um, and you can additionally check for, for updates to the product from this case 
uh, from this, this view as well. So with that said, if you're interested in more educational content centered around our product, be sure to check out our YouTube channel or for more general product information, feel free to go to our website at www.altero.com. Thanks for watching.